Well, the batteries aren't going to just be there. The uh, batteries are going to be distributed across the entire vehicle. Most likely. Oh, I see. We're going to we're remove the, the rear seat, and that's going to be taken up by part of the battery pack. We most likely have to put some additional batteries in the front to make up. Because of this first year, we're going to have to use a... Well, at least at this point, it looks like we're going to have to use lead acid just because of a cost-effective means. Right. Uh, the nickel metal hydrides are just very expensive to get. At, at this point, we're worried about raising money for tools and equipment alone, let alone a rather pricey battery pack that nickel metal hydrides. At this point, we really haven't gotten a chance to tackle the the hybrid aspects. We're, we're still in design phase of uh, building right. test beds and things like that. But as that moves along, uh, it really is it's definitely a, a possibility to, to get this thing as a running prototype again. So was this wasn't running at all when you first when you first pulled it up, yeah, right? Correct. Like, uh, it had been sitting for approximately what, two years, two, years, two and a half years, two, two and a half years. Okay. Here. Yeah, yeah, going yeah. I so, think um, another factor is uh, beyond all any uh, school knowledge that we all have. Um, it's we've been so fortunate. All the uh, real hands-on experience. Um, Real world car work. Um, our, our team, the amount of knowledge that's in our team, I, I just think, I don't know, we're very lucky to have. And um, I think that's going to be a huge factor in us, especially getting this car. Uh, running just getting the one car done with these, the, the new technologies we're hoping to include in this type of vehicle is going to be a heck of a lot of work to begin with in and of itself. Right, right. So just to have a running prototype that can be inspected by the state, that can be driven on the roads. Operational under both biodiesel and ethanol. That's that's a heck of an option. We're, Bio we're looking beyond just a hybrid vehicle. We're looking at a fuel neutral vehicle. The entire technology behind this vehicle is to be able to run on different fuel types. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the gen set that will be powering or supplementing the power of the battery will be uh, a modular uh, gen set so that we can actually take it out, run it on either ethanol or biodiesel this first year. And then looking toward the future, we're saying, well, possibly a micro turbine, right. possibly fuel cell technology. Things that haven't even been developed yet. This is why I got involved with this project. I know some of these guys are just, I mean, this is a senior project, but this is also a great opportunity to get away with these skills. And build this type of thing at KU, and say, well, let's start here. Okay. I believe we have the hands-on experience. We have team members who built cars from scratch. We have people who've taken dead cars and made them work. So we know the expectations and the timeline for that. Um, we have some technical experience and learning more in hybrids. I mean, it's it's a learning process. Um, I don't think we'll claim to say we built a hybrid from scratch, but a combination of actual technical uh, with you know hands-on experience mm -hmm. with real cars and um, you know and uh, hardworking and technical knowledge. I think um, I think sets our expectations to certainly have a running car and. Um, uh, we're not looking to go over 100 miles per gallon this year. Two <laughs> seconds. Oh, oh well, man. that's not good. You don't want that in there. Well, it's <laughs> <laughs> it was that the wood. <laughs> 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 There we go, it, it runs.